Roxo Media House. It's an entire year in a system before you really feel comfortable in it. Chandler Mills is only a couple games in and playing great football. Perfect delivery across the middle. J.P. Richardson is going to take it all the way. Welcome back to State of the Frogs. J.B. Wilson, your host, here as always with your head coach, Sonny Dykes. Coach, uh, you've had a, about a, a full day and, and some change to absorb what happened Saturday. It was a tough loss to Western Union, 24-21. Thoughts on the game? Yeah, disappointed. I mean, it was, uh, it was a tough game to lose. You know, I thought, um, thought we got off to a great start, uh, both sides of the ball, really. You know, scored 21 points in the first half, and that was a defense coming in that wasn't giving up many points. And so felt like we... Played pretty well the first half, missed a couple of opportunities, could have got on the scoreboard, and then, you know, didn't play well in the second half, and, and that was disappointing. Um, you know, lots of stuff we have to improve on, but thought we played uh, good enough defense to win, you know, had a goal line stand uh, late in the game, which obviously gave us a chance. Uh, had some errors in the kicking game, which, you know, we've been typically really good at that. Um, you know, two, two low kicks that got blocked, and just really didn't do a very good job of executing down the stretch. So it's two games this year where we've had the ball at the end of the game and had an opportunity to win and, and couldn't get it done, couldn't score. And, you know, you go back and you look at last year's game at West Virginia, you know, the roles were kind of reversed. West Virginia, you know, pretty much dominated the game. And we made a couple of plays at the end of the game to, to have a chance to win. And kind of the opposite thing happened this year. Right. Well, if we can stick on the special teams really quickly, and I'm not questioning the call by any stretch, but the second field goal that was blocked, we're just, I'm curious, as what goes on on the sidelines, it was a fourth and short, I believe, what, versus the decision to go forward or kick it, if we could ask what goes on inside the coach's head in that regard. Yeah, yeah, the first one, the first one was fourth and one, uh, the first blocked field goal, and, you know, there was a five and a half minutes left in the game, and we probably should have gone for that. I mean, there was a little bit of conversation. It was a very makeable field goal uh, for Griff. Uh, the second one was uh, uh, fourth and seven, a little bit longer. You know, I think at that, in that situation, that's probably a pretty easy kick. Um, there, you know, again, when you have confidence in your kicker. Uh, but we, we didn't execute either one of them. And so, you know, obviously looking back, the, the first one would have liked to have probably gone for that, you know, if I had to do over again, just because five and a half minutes to go, we get them stopped. We have, we have all the timeouts left. You know, we have a chance to get the ball back, which, which kind of worked out that way anyway, even though it got blocked. But um, anyway, it was, you know, those things are always tough and you always look back on some of them and, and wish you could do it over again. But uh, that's just the way it played out. On the injuries perspective, Coach, you've had a few key out for the Frogs. Obviously, most people were generally aware of that. Anybody new? Anybody improved? No, no I, think, I think we'll get everybody back this week. You know, uh, Brandon Coleman didn't play last week. He's had a, an ankle issue that's kind of been lingering for a while, and, and um, you know, he wasn't able to do it. And, and Jalen Robinson kind of with the same injury. But we should have both those guys back at practice uh, tomorrow. And, um, you know, we need them. I mean, that's kind of been we, – we've played some musical chairs a little bit at wide receiver this year and a little bit on the offensive line, kind of bouncing some guys around. And, and um, you know, I think we just need to get settled in offensively. We've looked really good at times, and but just haven't been able to do mm -hmm. it very consistently. And so, you know, I think getting everybody back and, and – you know, everybody back on the same page, I think, will certainly be helpful for us. Good to hear. On the same perspective, uh, a follow-up to what's in going on in Coach's head and players' heads, two of the, two of the players from, from West Virginia were carted off. Uh, when, when that happens and the game stops down for a lengthy period of time, generally speaking, how do, people, do players recover and get back into the, into the focus? Yeah, yeah, that's tough. And we had two, you know, pretty severe injuries. Um, you know, I talked to Neil Brown today, and both the kids are still here in Fort Worth uh, going back tomorrow. Um, it's hard, you know, it's hard, uh, it's hard for West Virginia, it's hard for us, you know, when, when you're playing in a game with somebody and, you know, they get injured and thankfully, you know, they're both going to be healthy and, mm -hmm. um, you know, one of them had a broken leg, uh, which was pretty bad break and the other, maybe a little bit of a concussion and um, strained neck, but, but thankfully both mm -hmm. of them will, will fully recover and have a chance to get back to, to West Virginia tomorrow. You know, th those are long stoppages of play, mm -hmm. it, it certainly has an impact on the game, but you know, there's really no excuse for, for not performing well and, and figuring out a way to win. Right. Well, I'm glad to hear about those kids. Um, 
you mentioned in your presser that uh, you know last year's team versus this year's that team found a way to win the close one. This year's obviously we're still young in the season, but is there a thing you could mention on as far as what makes that little pivotal moment from winning the, winning the close games and losing the close games? Is there a certain thing you can pinpoint? Yeah, I think there's. I mean, there's a number of things. I think you know it comes down to discipline and execution. Really, I mean, those are the two things. A lot of it's confidence. Um, you know, I think when you do it the first time, you, you have a lot of confidence. You know, we, we probably worked two-minute offense as much as anybody in college football. We had a two-minute opportunity at the end of the first half when we were right down the field and scored very quickly. Um, so we're certainly capable of executing in those mm -hmm. situations. We just haven't done it when it really mattered. And so, you know, I think the thing is that we have to do is we're going to need to do it at some point to, to know that we can and believe in ourselves. And, and, you know, as we said earlier, you know, offensively, there's just a lot of little issues that are holding us back. And it's really... You know, a lot of times it's doing the right thing. Um, you know, it's it's not jumping off sides or having a false start or making sure that you know the route and running the right route, making sure that the protection, the communication up front's going good. And then, you know, and then the quarterback's got to make throws and we have to make plays. And so there's, it's a combination of a lot of different things. Um, and, you know, we've been really good at some of those things so far this year, but unfortunately in, in crunch time we haven't been very good. Thank you, Coach. We'll be right back with State of the Frogs with your head coach, Sonny Dykes, for our student question of the week. You know, we wouldn't be able to do the things we were able to do this year without the Flying T Club. So we got to continue to, to get people involved. It's it's more important right now than it's ever been. Flying T is special. It's, it's, it's the best thing that I've encountered in college. It allows us to be able to offset a lot of the costs that our scholarships aren't able to cover. If people like winning, invest in in, in the Flying T Club and NIL. Uh, it's almost a necessity now in uh, the college football world. I mean, you got to kind of invest uh, in the programs, and what you put in is what you get out. What's up, Coach Sykes? My name is Alex Agnew. I'm a freshman business major from Richmond, Virginia. My question for you is, uh, do you prefer night games or day games, and how do you prepare going into those, and what's the difference between them? We're back. State of the Frogs with your head coach, Sonny Dykes. Coach, the, the question came from Alex. What do you think? Yeah, Alex, I mean, it's, uh, it's really not that much different in terms of uh, preparation during the week. A little different uh, meeting schedule on Friday. Um, normally, if we, if we have a night game, we don't have a special teams meeting um, at the school on Friday before we go to the hotel. If we do have an early meeting, we, we knock the special teams out, um, you know, here at the stadium before we go to the hotel and just changes our meeting schedule a little bit. You know, those night games are hard. I mean, you spend a lot of time in the hotel, you know, just kind of sitting around and, and, you know, we try to get our guys moving around, get them up relatively early, give them an opportunity to eat some food, have some meetings, take a, take a rest, get them back moving around uh, at night. And then the good thing I like about the early games, you wake up and play. Um, you know, it's this time of the year in September and early October, I, I probably prefer night games just because it's hot and, and I think our players probably enjoy playing better at night. And then as the season goes along, I prefer day games. So. That's kind of my preference. Unfortunately, they don't ask us. It's all about television and what do they want. So that's kind of what we do. Do they ever ask you those kind of questions? Is it purely as it's a television? No, it's television controls the rights to the start times of, of every football game. And so a lot of it just depends on kind of what's going on in your season, that type of thing. Thank you, Alex. Great question. That was brought to you by our friends at Railhead Barbecue. We'll be right back. Simply the best barbecue in Fort Worth. Dine-in, catering, or drive through 2900 Montgomery, just off I-30. Remember, the best barbecue in Fort Worth is at Railhead Smokehouse. We're back with State of the Frogs with your host, JW, and this is our head coach, Sonny Dykes. We're talking about our next week's opponent, the Iowa State Hawkeyes. It'll be a 7 o'clock kickoff from Ames, Iowa. What do you know about Ames, Iowa, Coach? Been to Ames a couple of times. Been a hard place to win historically. Um, you know, they've got a good football team. It's a great environment, uh, especially night games up there. Uh, they're, they're tough to beat. Uh, we're going to have to play well. It's uh, they got a great crowd. You know, it's, it doesn't really matter what kind of season they're having. Those guys come out and support. They're loud. It's really the only thing going on in Iowa, uh, <laughs> that part of Iowa during the day. And so it draws a lot of people and, and uh, great support. And they've had a lot, a lot of success there at Iowa State through the years, uh, especially since Matt Campbell got there. So, you know, it's a team that they'll be ready to play. You know, their, their offense is really starting to come to life as the season progresses. They're starting to score more and more points. Scored 20 in the first half against Oklahoma last week. And, and, uh, you know, starting to kind of get some things figured out offensively and then defensively, they're always tough. I mean, they're going to play a tough brand of football, uh, going to be physical, going to be hard to, to you know, generate big plays against them. You have to be consistent in your approach and you got to do a really good job of executing at a high level. And so those are things that have been challenging for us this year. So we're going to have to get it fixed. Any history with Coach uh, Matt Campbell? 
Yeah, you know, Coach, I've known Coach Campbell for a little bit. Um, you know, not, not too much. You know, we, we've kind of talked football uh, through the years before I was at TCU with some of the guys on their staff and have a lot of respect for him and what he's done at Iowa State. And, you know, historically it's been a tough place to win, but he's done it consistently and has really built in the program. And I think every time they take the field any given Saturday, they, those guys have a chance to win. They're going to play hard and they're going to be well coached. It's a fun place to play football, no doubt about it. Uh, Coach, is it fair to say after last week and coming up this week, it's going to be a little chippy on the field this Saturday night, but has there been a change in mentality during practice? Anybody do anything different to get the kids ready? No, you know, not really. I mean, we've been practicing well. I mean, I think this year's team has practiced very similar to last year's team. It hasn't been really too much of a difference. Uh, you know, the biggest thing for us has just been an inability to finish games, you know, and, and last year we played a bunch of close games. Week one went to Kansas and had to kind of make some plays down the stretch to win that one. And then down 17, um, you know, here at Oklahoma State, had to figure out how to win that one. And so, you know, we've been behind in games and, and just the difference has been, you know, for whatever reason last year, when we had an opportunity to go down and score, we did it. Mm -hmm. And so we got to figure out what the difference is and, and get it fixed. Well, we're all excited to see how the Frogs bounce back. Thank you, Head Coach okay. Sonny Dykes. Appreciate you. That's the State of the Frogs with your Head Coach Sonny Dykes. Roxo Media House.